just the other day, as I was surfing the web, I found myself absorbed in an article concerning a basketball player, a rather talented one, who had been banned for life from playing professional ball. The cause, his inability to stay free from drug dependency. The article stated that despite several attempts, he could not stay off of cocaine and the league could not allow him to play professional basketball any longer. This talented ball player could not get his act together, as they say, sufficiently to maintain his career. And this was a career which held possibilities for greatness. Unfortunately, the story is not so unique. We could certainly list the careers destroyed, the relationships severed, the individuals devastated and others who died by the overwhelming influence of an obsession with addictive substances. Now, one of the players of this player's uh, teammates made an interesting comment regarding this young man. And he said, he has to find some kind of a belief that's stronger than the disease that has caught him. Stronger than the disease that has caught him. Now, if that basketball player came to any one of you and after sharing his dilemma, inquired of you, so what keeps you together? How do you handle life's little emergencies and major crises, life's setbacks, life's challenges, even life's joys? How would you respond because where do you turn when life doubles back on you or leaves you stunned or perplexed or wandering in the desert of need and longing? Whom do you seek when you need comfort and strength? You know, those are the same questions asked of Jesus throughout chapter 8 of Mark's Gospel. Only the questions aren't straightforward, but they are couched as underlying concerns of the people following Jesus as well as of the disciples. Let me give you an example. They watch him performing miracles. The multiplying of the loaves and the fishes. He walks on the water. He restores sight to the blind man. And yet, they still ask, who will feed us? Who will save us? What do you mean you are going to undergo suffering? How can that be? You are the Messiah. It seems that the need for a belief that is stronger than the disease that has caught them spans the ages. And so Jesus reveals to them a reality that goes much deeper. The scope is much broader than they are presently able to understand in answering their questions, Jesus reveals the way of faith, a way which encompasses life itself, life's very meaning. Jesus reveals a faith that is shaped by the cross and the resurrection. 
he says to them, if anyone would come after me, let that one deny him or herself and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses her life for my sake and the gospel's will save it. To sum up the passage in two words, commitment, discipleship. The gospel narratives identify Jesus as the one who not only reveals the true meaning of faith, but who also calls his disciples and his church to be faithful. You see, you cannot separate faith in Jesus as the Christ from our response of discipleship. You can't just talk the talk or talk a good game and make it seem as though you are faithful and you are a witness and then go out into the world and do something dastardly, whatever that might be. But how are you going to explain your faith to that basketball player? And my suggestion, as I have made this suggestion more than once, is to do it from the foot of the cross. For you see, the events which take place on the cross changes the course of history forever. The crucifixion of Jesus places you as well as me in a new relation to God and to each other. God is no longer absent, but God is very present to us in a very real, very dramatic, very suffering way. The chasm that separates God from the world and humans from each other is overcome in Jesus and his cross. C.S. Lewis put it this way, Christ's death has somehow put us right with God and has given us a fresh start. Now, isn't that what the teammate alluded to when he was commenting that the basketball player needed a belief that was stronger than the disease that had caught him? And isn't that what each one of us longs for at some point in our existence? That chance to start fresh, to wipe the slate clean, to erase the hurts and misunderstandings, to heal the brokenness and the pain, to restore severed relationships, to live as though, to quote a very old and sort of corny phrase, today is the first day of the rest of your life. We've said it for years, and yeah, we go, yeah, well, whatever, you know, and that seems cool, but um, I don't know how seriously we take that. But that is the opportunity that is truly offered to us the good news is that all those possibilities can become realities because God in Christ gives us the chance for salvation. And he gave us that chance when he went to the cross for us. The crucifixion reveals the radical nature of God's love. I wonder if any of you have had the good fortune to experience unconditional love. That kind of love which accepted you, supported you, loved you despite shortcomings. I'm not talking about an indulgent relationship, but one that was shaped and sustained by love. That is what 
our Lord expresses for us. And then he challenges us to express it for each other. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. So here we are on this journey of Lent. We're looking at a world that every day astounds and confounds us. We look at personal relationships and sometimes they're wonderful and sometimes they bring us so much pain because of brokenness and misunderstanding and you know that sort of refusal to to let things go and so we look to the cross if you are looking for consolation if you are looking for understanding if you are looking for the most unconditional love that exists throughout time we simply look to the cross know what it represents know what our Lord went through for us and we can feel assured we can feel supported we know that our Lord is here for us through any situation and that not only are we allowed to take it in and appreciate it and love it and and can hold on to it but once that has happened to us we become strengthened to reach out and to offer that kind of loving support to others but we can only do that because the power of the cross is so great that nothing can stop it. What it represents, what it actually was, and how it leads us forward. The power of the cross helps us to live more holy and authentically as a child of God. Consider your responsibility to those who stumble and falter, to those who look to you for answers and for healing love. Perhaps the one thing you can do among many things that you can do is to direct their gaze to the cross. And then take them by the arm or by the hand and walk with them to the empty tomb where the entire reality of salvation history in its fulfillment becomes real. I encourage you to do that. Because you see, you, as well as I, have everything to gain. Amen. Mm -hmm.